Thanks everyone for joining. Um, I see we still have folks uh, coming onto the Zoom. We're really excited about tonight. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and begin uh, by welcoming everyone to this event, uh, the Feast and Fitness event hosted by the President's Council on Sports, Fitness, and Nutrition. Uh, my name is Rehan Marani, and I serve as the Executive Director for the President's Council. Tonight, I'm joined by several of our council members, inclu uh, including uh, Mike Salmanov, Jose Garces, Ben Jacobs, uh, Dr. Faranmi Okanlami, and Barbie Izquierdo. Tonight, uh, we are in for a treat, I think, and for a really great event. Uh, but before we go ahead and get started, just a couple of quick things that I wanted to kind of let everyone know about. The President's Council, for those of you that may not know, is composed of 29 individuals appointed by President Biden uh, to serve as part of a federal advisory council whose mission is to educate, engage, and empower every individual living within the country to adopt a healthy lifestyle that includes regular physical activity and good nutrition. Uh, to affect uh, change and to you know, uplift the goals of the council, one of the things that we do is we reference to uh, federal guidance, such as the dietary guidelines for all Americans and the physical activity guidelines for all Americans. Uh, the great thing about all of these is that they're accompanied by free resources offered by the federal government in multiple languages that everyone can use, uh, such as MyPlate, uh, which is one resource which has a variety of tools and resources that helps build nutrition skills for everyone. Uh, and can help you create a healthy eating plan. Another is the Move Your Way campaign, uh, which are help to design help and <clears throat> sorry, which are designed to help everyone uh, live healthier lives through physical activity. And then, in addition to that, uh, the Biden administration has also, as part of their renewed commitment around hunger, uh, created a national strategy on hunger, nutrition, and health which provides additional resources, including a guidance plan that addresses hunger and diet-related diseases. So I, I hope all of you get a chance to look at those as well. Before we dive in, I do have uh, a couple of additional housekeeping announcements. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention was we obviously always strive to have inclusive and accessible events. So I wanted to make sure that everyone knew that you can go ahead and turn on closed captioning for this Zoom if you so wish. Next to the reactions that are on your Zoom toolbar, you should be able to see uh, an option to start live closed captioning. Uh, once you click on that, uh, closed captions should begin to start appearing. Uh, we are recording this event, as all of you know. Uh, the link is going to be sent out to everyone after this is over uh, to make sure all of you have it. We'll also post it on the President's Council uh, YouTube, as well as our social media, and we encourage all of you to share it with anyone who may have missed out on tonight's really great event. Uh, and uh, on top of that, one other thing that I wanted to mention, one thing that's really special about tonight is we're going to have a live Q&A discussion uh, right after the feast portion of this event. So we encourage everyone to enter any uh, questions that you might have about the cooking that takes place in the videos into the Q&A box. We'll try to answer as many questions as we possibly can, but we can't ensure that we'll get to all of them. And then the last thing that I'll go ahead and mention is that given that we are a part of the government at the Department of Health and Human Services, I wanted to let everyone know that there's many products that are mentioned tonight, but uh, none of them are endorsed by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services or any government entity. Um, I just wanted to make sure that everyone was clear with that disclaimer. With that, uh, we can now get started with the fun stuff. Uh, I'll turn it over to one of our council members, uh, Chef Mike Salmanoff. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you for having us. Thank you, fellow council members, and thank you, council itself, for, for putting this together. Uh, good evening. Thank you for joining. We're excited to spend time with you all this evening as we prepare for the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday. A few weeks ago, I was able to join Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro and his wife, First Lady Lori Shapiro, as well as my fellow council member and good friend, Chef Jose Garces spent a little bit of time in their kitchen of the governor's residence. They let us in and we like didn't make that big of a mess. We're delighted to share our time with you tonight. We're here to answer your questions about preparing these delicious, healthy Thanksgiving recipes. If somebody doesn't have access to these recipes, please write in the chat. 
and we'll talk about it. Um, you can post it and we'll hopefully answer your questions afterwards. Uh, the menu tonight includes a very simple and delicious caramelized Brussels sprouts by me, Chef Jose's incredible sweet corn humitas, and the governor's uh, candied pecans that are apparently famous in the Shapiro household. And we're gonna, we're gonna eat those. Um, we're also gonna hear from our good friend and fellow council member, uh, Chef Ben Jacobs, who's gonna talk to us about Native American Heritage Month and his family and community traditions during the month of November. We are very, very lucky to have Chef Ben Jacobs here. Um, proud, as a proud member of the Presidential Council on Sports, Fitness and Nutrition, we are working <clears throat> to spotlight the challenges of many individuals, families and communities uh, that face, uh, uh, and communities face to living a healthy lifestyle. Our mission is to educate, engage, and empower all individuals living in the United States to adopt a healthy lifestyle. With that context and background, we're gonna take a peek into the kitchen and we're gonna watch our cooking video. Feel free to post your questions in the Q&A box below and throughout. We will answer them after the video. All right, let's get to the video. Thanks everybody. So nice to have you both here cooking with us today, and I can't wait to see what you've got in store for us. We've got some cooking to do for sure. We yeah. do, we do. So we're gonna go through a couple different things that we love. We're gonna talk a little bit about why these are relevant, why these are easy, a little bit also about the initiatives of the President's Council, and we're gonna talk to our friend uh, Ben Jacobs, who's, uh, who's, gonna, yeah. who's gonna dial in and talk a little bit about uh, Native American History Month, and um, you know, and we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a good time. We'll That's great. I'm okay. super psyched you guys are here. Welcome to the governor's residence. Thanks for lending your voice all across our nation. Um, working with President Biden on this important issue. We appreciate you guys very much. Well, thank you so, so much. And thank Absolutely. you for your work and your service. And thanks for opening your house to us and to everybody yeah. out there that's watching. All right, so listen, Let's really, get to work. really, really simple. I'm gonna make Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna get this started. And then while they're cooking, we're gonna go over and see what Chef Jose is making. Brussels sprouts, I think, are a very, very easy thing now, to make. Before you go any further, I just yeah. wanna let Jose in on one of your little secrets. Yeah. Michael loves all kinds of olive oil and all kinds of oils. I, I can um, see that. And yeah. like, he was, that was a generous pour there. I don't know if you know that or not. But you used a lot of oil. Is that healthy? Is it olive not? oil is absolutely healthy. And okay. we're using this basically to char Brussels sprouts. So okay. you can actually reuse the oil. You're not going to be eating all this olive oil, drinking all the olive oil. But so the idea is everybody thinks of searing and sauteing as like things lighting on fire, oil, yada yada. Yeah. I learned a lot this, of splattering. A lot of house. splattering yeah. and frankly, we're all really busy and cleaning up oil in your stove kind of sucks, right? Yeah. So this method, which is very simple, which is just cutting Brussels sprouts, the little roots off, cutting them in half and laying them down, is simple and it doesn't make a mess and you don't burn your wrists, which is great. And the result, as you will see, is going to be incredible. The Brussels sprouts get really charred mm. and taste kind of like popcorn, which is good also when you're trying to get your kids to eat Brussels sprouts, yes. right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> now you're, you're putting the Brussels in like before you even heat this exactly. up. Exactly, I know, okay. you're like, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, we're not doing? heating up the You know the oven's behind I know, us. I know. And yeah. so that's the thing, we're gonna actually start in cold olive oil and we're gonna bring it up so we don't singe the olive oil and get it you know, olive oil, once you hit smoke point, it doesn't taste very good, right? right? That's right. It's a- uh, And I like it, I mean, this is kind of like a confit, confit method, yeah. but I'm, I'm liking the, the last minute charring. So you, so I confit artichokes in a similar way. Yeah. It's just in olive oil, garlic, and aromatics, but the char technique, I kind of, I'm, I'm excited to see what you do with that. It's so simple, chef. We, we're not even gonna confit it and cook it slow. We're gonna put this on the stove. We're gonna throw in a little bit of garlic. You just kind of smash the garlic and oh. throw it in, which is nice. Take out a little bit of anger and aggression. <laughs> Presumably you have a lot of family visiting, which is great. <laughs> Sometimes you need to just it. like, ah, right? <laughs> smash the garlic, throw it in, and then we're just going to salt it, and we're going to put it on the stove and actually turn it right up to high. So what's going to happen is the bottom is going to char and sear. Because we're starting cold, the olive oil will not singe and burn, and that will uh. give enough time for the water to actually steam the vegetables, which is great. And you're probably saying, you know what? Everybody hates Brussels sprouts in my family. No problem. We can use cauliflower just like this. Florets, mm. broccoli, potatoes even work, provided that they're cut really thin. Huh. This is a great, easy method. And you can see this doesn't involve searing and things like on fire, right? Let's right. just do a little bit of salt and 
Pepper? This is salt? Oh, this is fancy. <laughs> well, look, it's it's nice only the best for you when I was out here. So we've got our Brussels sprouts that are cut side down yeah. in olive oil with garlic. And I'm going to just put this on the stove okay. and turn it up, okay? We're gonna go medium high heat and that's it. And that's okay? it, you're not flipping anything? Not yet, not yet. All right. Okay. But for folks who are watching this, I mean, look, you, you've got access to everything's fresh and it's delicious and what have you. For folks who are kind of like living, you know, regular, normal life, like how do they make smarter choices? And you're a busy guy, right? You carve out 60 minutes. How do you advise folks to kind of carve out that time? So I think give, give, give people like practical lessons. Yeah. So I think what's what's important, and, and my wife Jill and I do this, is we prioritize our food planning in the morning. That's our first cup of coffee. Hey, what are we eating today? What's what's and mostly around dinner, the big meal. What ingredients are we getting? What are you? What are we curating today? And again, uh, I know that some folks obviously are on limited budgets, but still, it's about healthy, whole foods, fresh foods. Mm -hmm. And what I'd love to do with you know, in my role in the President's Council, is show people how to cook these simple foods. And you know, maybe cool. maybe look look at a budget and how do you you know how do you have make a family meal for four with. Ten or fifteen dollars, where it can yeah. be challenging. So, Super so that's that's kind of my my challenge. I'm going to try to take that on and go from there with I love the help it. of this guy right here, Mike. Some sizzling. Yeah, it sounds there. amazing. <laughs> so easy, right? Okay, so already, as I said, we start from cold, the oil, and then we go to hot, and it's going to sizzle and it's going to be great. But we don't have to do anything. Okay. Actually, we can get started with that's lovely. Yeah, great. So my meal in, in, in Thanksgiving, and I've, uh, I'm an Ecuadorian American. Okay. Uh, grew up in grew up in Chicago, but really tried to embrace both sides of it: American traditions and my Ecuadorian identity. Love it. Love and it. so, um, incorporating some Ecuadorian uh, dishes into Thanksgiving was always something I tried to. Do. So what I'm going to make is um, these are called um, humitas, or they're sweet corn humitas. They're kind of they look, look like kind of like a tamale. So this would take place of like cornbread or, or another like corn Ooh. element yeah. that you would have. And they're light and fluffy and pretty simple to make. I'm going to just grab this blender here. Yeah. So this is a uh, whole fresh, it's going to end of the season, but uh, fresh shucked corn. Okay. We took it off the cob. And we have, we made some corn stock from Ooh. corn cobs. Okay. Yeah. And then we have uh, just some uh, fat free milk. Okay. And this is agave nectar, so mm. just a, you know a more a little sweet, a little sweeter. Yeah, it kind of brings out the natural sweetness. Do you mind blending this? I love it. You got it. All right, we're good. Right. I'd give it maybe another ten seconds. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. Pour it right in. Pour it right in. The so chef, is this? Did That's you guys good. do this growing Perfect, up as a right kid? There. Yeah. In Chicago, is this part of your Thanksgiving? This is part of it. Yeah. So this is my my grandma's recipe, Mamita Amada, who I named Amada after my restaurant. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. yeah. So so I have this, you know, basically what is like a corn a corn mixture. Okay. So right? you didn't want it smooth. Didn't want it smooth. A little chunky, a little corn is okay. Uh, then I have um, this is masarina and masarepa. So it's basically two corn flours. Okay. So that's really what's going to thicken this up. And I did a little rift on this one. So normally these are just made with cheese. And um, I added some um, fresh grated zucchini. Oh, just, just raw, raw zucchini. zucchini. Raw zucchini, yeah. So we'll put the zucchini in. Oh, because the, the fiber and the water, like it makes it kind of creamy, right? That's right. Oh, that's so smart. And then uh, some, this is just grated queso fresco. It's just a cow's mm -hmm. milk cheese. Throw that in there. And yeah, you want to give that a little mix? Yeah, but... uh, I have a little bit of baking powder that's going to kind of... Why do you need that? It. It's going to lift it up a little bit. It's going to make it kind of poof and give it some air, a little bit of salt. Sure. All right, while you guys are mixing, I just want to show you. Oh, yeah, that's so good. Day. Now it smells it's really so nice. Good. It smells so good. It like, smells like not like Brussels sprouts, right? Yeah. He's not lying. I'm not lying. It smells amazing. Really good. And we have the oil. It's not charred, it's not too dark, which means that once we're done with this, we can use it to right. saute. And you started it cool, so we didn't get the whole sizzle exactly. mess. You're exactly. not cleaning up the, the stove here. I'm right? not cleaning up, <laughs> well, I'm not. <laughs> but you didn't make a mess. Yes. All right, so once we're here, we're pretty much done. This is okay. what's easy about this. 
you're gonna take, um, I do have a little extra, this is a Oaxaca cheese, it's a, it's a mozzarella kind of stringy. Yeah. You, can, you can use this or not if you wanna keep it healthier, but. Chef, uh, what would you use in place of this if people can't get the Oaxacan cheese? Yeah. So you could just use uh, mozzarella. It's okay. fine. Well, or string cheese would also work. String right? cheese, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's good cheese. Yeah. I think we should do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sounds we'll good. Do it. I, mean, I have to decide. So these oh, corn husks, you can see. Really good, isn't it? Yeah. Really corn husks, these are just steam. These are dried corn husks. You can get them pretty much anywhere these days. So you're not taking that off the corn. You're buying that separate. Buying it separately. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Because they do they do process the husk a little bit for tamale. So this, this works. <laughs> yeah. And then super easy all you do is just take a little spoonful of this and put it right in the center okay you'll put like a few chunks of this oaxaca cheese or string cheese mozzarella right there kind of tuck it in yeah and just fold over boom mm. give it another little twir twirl and you're done that's it wow yeah, that's it easy. can you keep the one side open keep to the one the steam? to get the steam coming in amazing i have a uh, what I call a bamboo steamer, right? That's like what you'd use for like a wonton or something, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah, these are these are available. You can use any steamer that you'd like, okay. but this works pretty good. So okay. I actually have some that are ready to go. Okay. That we, we made a uh, big reveal. So it's all steamed together, stacked up like that? Yeah, you can stack them up and you can you can make up to 30 of these. So you boil water. Boil water. And then just let yeah. the steam so come you, through. So you put about, uh, I don't know, half water halfway up the pot, put the steam, these guys are like, they're like 10 bucks. They're pretty, pretty inexpensive to buy. And then, uh, yeah, you can stack them up. They steam for about 20 minutes and they're pretty it's much awesome. done. Yeah. yeah. And what's great, and I'll show you, there's a great leftover. We got to get something. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I have a little plate, some forks here. So you can see they steam up pretty nicely. Whoa. And then you just, you take them out and instead of cornbread, Guys, I would love for you to give these a shot. Wow. That's, really cool. That's amazing. I love the zucchini edition. It's like it's like adding applesauce to brownie mix. You know that? Oh, so yeah. Just like, you don't eat the but corn. But you use that to kind of form it all together. Form it all, and it gives you a little more corn flavor Thank as well. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Ready? Oh, yeah, those tamales are just oh, yeah. the best. I found the cheesy part. You got part. the cheesy part. I got the cheesy part. Oh my God. very challenging. That is so good. Oh, wow, thank you. It's so good. <laughs> and you could sub out really, I mean, really any good. veg will work yeah. in there. Mm. And then How good are that? You Amazing. can use like grated pumpkin or carrot if you wanted to, right? You could, absolutely. absolutely. Anything that goes with corn, Chef, you know, put it right in. Oh, very nice. nice. All right, so listen, these Brussels sprouts are ready to go. I'm just going to keep it in there. Yeah. 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 We're gonna drain some of this olive oil that can be reused for salad dressing. It can be reused to cook, you know, onions and garlic for the stuffing that you're gonna make. While yeah. this is sizzling, we're just gonna finish this up. We're gonna throw in some slivered almonds. So if you were eating this not on Thanksgiving, what would you serve it with? So, good question. Typically, so in, in Ecuador, this is something you would eat at like six o'clock with a cup of coffee or tea. And it's oh. kind of like, yeah, kind of a lighter, like, substantial snack of sorts but you could eat this with and i mean you can have it you can have it with seafood on the side you can have it with other proteins the other great thing is when these things sit up so if you don't eat them all and you have leftovers they'll they'll solidify right in the fridge or whatever then you can pan sear them they get nice and crispy and then you have a whole other thing going but just by putting a little thought and healthier spins on it, you can actually get to that end result. Still have big flavors, but yeah. have to be a little bit healthier. Agreed. Yeah, this is delicious. Agreed. Which is actually, I mean, which is why we're here, right? Yeah. Which is why we're adding things like vegetables, we're adding things that are easier, that are lighter. And then, you know, thinking about like what your exercise, what your activity is, to just, to, you know, what your mental health, what your needs are for that day or for the season. Yeah, that's right. So that's right. All right. All right, what do we got going on okay, here? So we got our Brussels sprouts here that are roasted. They smell amazing. We're going to just use very basic. We yeah. like, I don't like fancy vinegar. I mean, I like fancy vinegars. White distilled vinegar works just fine for us in our household. Okay. A couple splashes. It's just sort of Why do you need that? Because what you want to do is, first of all, you want to stop the cooking. Plus, you need a little burst of acidity, which is going to help with the sort of roasting and the caramelizing. Let's just give it a little toss. Check this out. 
You're not going to flip it. <laughs> I'm not going to, but I want you to take a look at what we did with very little effort. Oh. That's amazing. And to the kids that are scared about Brussels sprouts, yeah. the smell of boiled Brussels sprouts has haunted <laughs> us <laughs> for generations. True, generations. Yes. This is just something very, very different. Mm. It Pretty does hot. not smell like the haunted yeah. smell that... It doesn't. And I would say, actually, Chef, with oh, your tail, like, that, that this works. is going to work that, really that, well, that, right? That looks... So Look at us. We're bringing it guys together. <laughs> New restaurant opening up here at the uh, yeah. Nurse Mansion. This is it right here. Exactly. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is just sprinkle some of the dried cranberries on top. Now, if you wanted to do a little bit of cheese, a little bit of Parmesan, or a little bit of cheddar, oh, that's cool. by all means. But this is a vegan dish. The toasted almonds will be robust like Parmesan cheese. You could even use... The pecans or the sugar nuts, I think, on top of the pasta. Oh, I think, I think really, that's a winner. Right really there, good. Yeah. We have some dried it's fruit. It's hot. That's and, really and good. This is made in real time. No Hollywood, no like <laughs> cooking show, whatever. This is just no something Hollywood. That we've made very easy. And the back of the stove isn't covered with oil. And I still have all my my the skin on my yeah. arms. So we're good. You don't have anything on your shirt. You're Not yet. Yeah, I mean, that is like honestly the whole drive out here. I was drinking coffee, and I'm gonna. I was like, we're spilling coffee. Yeah. So that's true. <laughs> this never happens. But super, super easy. And like, you can use this with cabbage. You can do this with kale. You can do this with cauliflower mm. or broccoli. Very simple. It's very and good. Actually, frozen Brussels sprouts also works really, really well. Yeah. yeah. Do you cook with Brussels sprouts? I do. I do, and I, I have a. I have a, a memory. I wish I would have had this recipe. My, yes. my son, when he was uh, about six years old, we were like, hey, green beans, asparagus, let's get some greens in you. And I gave him some Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Still upset with all of this day. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, hey, you, you know, okay. all this you're going to at least try. And he tried and he had a, kind of a bad. So he still <laughs> reminds me, dad, those Brussels sprouts. But, but he I'm might like, like those. He might like those. Right, right, right. Right. Here's what you got to do. You say they're chef's mic, chef mics. So he doesn't like it. That's your guy. You blame him. <laughs> if he likes to be like, ah, oh, I taught him. That's, that's what we did. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's um, great. Those are really those good. Those are really good. I've been working way too hard at making Brussels sprouts. Yeah. yeah that... Also, we put it in the hot oil and then it just kind of. And it bloomed up. Yeah. yeah. All right, wait. So are we doing the pecans now? Is that, are we, is that happening? I would love to. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Here we go. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, oh Max. Nice. Chef Max. Here we go, Chef Max. Come on in. This is our Max, 14 years old, number three of four, and an aspiring chef, maybe, we'll see. Or, you, you know, know, medical school. <laughs> Max, what do we got here? Uh, candied pecans. Now, come on, man. Sugar nuts. We... Sugar nuts. Ah. There you go. Guys, try these. Oh. These are Lori's homemade, famous... Sugar allegedly famous. Mm. Wait, are we sharing the recipe with everyone here? Yeah, what do you do, babe? Well, I mean, I don't, basically what you do is you have a big um, nonstick um, sauce pot on the stove, oh, and you oh, yeah. put in sugar, a little water, cinnamon, and some uh, cloves and nutmeg, mm -hmm. and you boil it to get it to boil and to dissolve the sugar, and then you dump the pecans in, and you stir constantly. Yeah, until by the way. The constantly, constantly is a like a little annoying because we all well. have to stir, take stir turns. For a, yeah. for a long time, um, you stir it until it turns to coated, and then you put in a little vanilla, and spread them out to cool, and that's it. Super easy, except oh, for the stirring. Constantly. You're forgetting the most important part. What was the most? Important? The yelling at the kids to stop eating them before stop the dinner. Them. Yes, yeah. that happens yeah. a lot. Yeah. It's part of the recipe. They're isn't very popular. Right. <laughs> well, I, you know, it's nice to be able to put these things all together. We've got a couple different couple different things that we have to discuss, a couple of different topics, right? Okay. We're going to talk about uh, Native American um, Heritage Month mm -hmm. right now with our friend Ben, who's going to be joining us from Colorado, from Denver. Right. We're going to learn about Native American traditions, which are of the most importance, especially right now. Okay. And we're also going to talk a little bit about fitness, right? Because mm -hmm. this is feast and fit. So we're going to feast on this. You got to do both. Food, and we're going to do a little fit after okay. this. But we're gonna um, we're gonna log in and we're gonna yap with Ben real quick cool. about this, and you're gonna say hi. All right, great, that's good. What's up, Ben? Welcome to the Seven governor's residence. Thank you. Can you see me? Can you hear me? There you are. We got yeah. you now. Hey, hey, Ben. Welcome to the governor's residence. You know these guys? You know Mike and Jose? 
Yeah, I know them. They 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 look and sound familiar. You're not missing much, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, yes, I am. Of course, I am. We got Mike and Jose. We also have Chef Max, our 14 year old son, right here. Hey, Max. All right, the 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 superior chef in the room. There you go. <laughs> the first lady of Pennsylvania, who's our chef in our house. But thanks so much for joining us. It's super cool to have you here and and be a part of this this conversation. Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate the time. Thanks for having me join. Tell us about you. All right, cool. So uh, I'm Ben Jacobs. I am a member of the Osage Nation, which is located in Northeast Oklahoma, uh, but I reside in Denver, Colorado, and I am the co-owner, co-founder of Tokabe, an American Indian eatery, which is a native-focused um, fast casual restaurant, and Tokabe Indigenous Marketplace, which is um, an online resource where we purchase native produced ingredients from all over the country, um, from individual producers to tribal producers that we then um, help uh, redistribute all over the country. And also that's what our restaurant utilizes um, as many of our in ingredients. So it's really cool that our, our restaurant is clearly tied um, and very specifically tied to the marketplace. That's very cool, very cool. So what are you, what are you cooking up around Thanksgiving time? What, what's gonna be on your menu at home? Uh, yeah, so we uh, we do kind of a blend of of two things. So we do what people would see sometimes as a, a, a traditional Thanksgiving, an American traditional Thanksgiving with a you know a whole turkey. Uh, but we like to uh, also incorporate many of our uh, traditional ingredients as well. So we do what you could call like a wild rice pilaf almost. We do uh, a maple glazed butternut squash, which is in some some cases, you know, people add that to their um, traditional meals. But then we have, you know, our variation, our version of uh, uh, like a cranberry relish, cranberry salsa. So we kind of do uh, the two the two sides um, of the what you think of as an American Thanksgiving, but also we tie in very specifically many of our native um, traditional ingredients, uh, you know, sweet potatoes is one that's also really important that we bring into to my family. So, yeah, we uh, we try and incorporate things that are very important to us specifically and culturally at the same time. That's awesome. By the way, if you need a tip on anything with Brussels sprouts or corn, I got you here. These guys know what they're doing. Right. So, well, if you need some buffalo, if you need some bison in there, that's that's something that's actually pretty important in in our household as well. So, I got you on that one. We need to bring that. I think we need buffalo and bison roaming around the uh, governor's mansion every oh, year. Yeah. next year. It's got to be some zoning rules or something, I guess. <laughs> well, you're in charge. Yeah. So. <laughs> you can do what you want. Uh, so, Ben, like I, I, we are honored to have you, and we're honored to be able to celebrate. Basically, I just wanted to hear from you and what your perspective was on this sort of holiday and around this time of the year and have some insight a little bit onto your culture and to your ancestry. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you asking that. So, uh, you know, ne November and, you know, in the whole the whole month is actually Native American Heritage Month. So that's an incredibly important uh, time of year for Native peoples to be recognized on a broader scale um, and to really tell the stories of um, who we are currently um, the amazing things that are happening in our communities um, now, but also to make sure that we discuss the history that we um, that we all come from. And and for me, it's really specific. It's an important uh, time of year, and especially um, with Thanksgiving, you know, sometimes can be uh, really conflicted for a lot of Native right. peoples just through identity because um, there's the pilgrims and Indians, but really the first Thanksgiving was pilgrims and Wampanoag people. So it was a very specific community and. I think this is a great time of year for us to be able to share the stories of how there's over 500, um, you know, recognized tribes within um, America and that we can really each be able to tell our individual stories because we all uh, are more than one image. We're all very uniquely um, our own, depending on our region, our community, uh, our cultural values, our traditions, our languages. So, you know, it's obviously something that's a part of our lives every day of the year, but uh, November is a really important time uh, for Native peoples in general to tell our stories, but also to be able to try and reclaim and and tell the story of Thanksgiving now from from our perspective and not kind of the the older romantic image of it. Really, just kind of claim that as this is who we are as Native people. This is where we're going, and that um, we're all uniquely individual, uh, yeah. but we are a very strong, tight knit community of Natives. Um, throughout America, because again, you know, I'm Osage from Oklahoma, which is very different than 
Wampanoag um, of the of the Northeast. And so, uh, yeah, we appreciate this time of year for people that reach out and want to learn and educate and and try to, to to tell our stories. And again, be very current and modern. And like this moment right now, we can talk about who we are now and where we're going as a people. You know, what's the one thing you'd want people to know about that they don't know right now? Or what's the one resource you'd steer them to 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 go be able to learn some more. Like, what, what do you think? I think it's critically important our kids know their history um, and, and educate us a little bit here. What should folks know? Yeah, I think that uh, the big thing that I'd like to get across is that, um, you know, if we talk about the first get Thanksgiving, it very much was that romantic story of these two communities coming together and sharing a feast, but it's so much more than that. What I'd really like people to walk away with, you know, especially uh, now is that, Native peoples are still very much here and present and doing amazing things and really uh, our communities are flourishing again through uh, sharing our cultural values, sharing our traditions through food, like with our restaurant, with other Native restaurants that are growing out there, um, being able to uh, redevelop our languages for our children um, is that we're not this historic image that we're very much still here and present and forward and progressive, like all these other communities. And, and when I bring it up to Thanksgiving is really changing what Thanksgiving is, is again, that was a story um, that happened, but now, you know, especially again, in this conversation, all of us coming from different communities, Thanksgiving has become a distinctly American holiday and it's become something that we can all share amongst ourselves, that it's coming together, it's being together, um, and sharing foods that are important to us, you know, while, of course, incorporating uh, that idea of Thanksgiving, maybe, but also incorporating what's important to us and what's on our family table, uh, no matter what community you come from. So I think the biggest thing for me in terms of an education standpoint is just being open and engaged with finding, uh, you know, the true histories of what's going on and reaching out specifically to the resources of, you know, if you want to learn about being Osage to Osage resources or to Wampanoag to Wampanoag resources. And when you're talking about food, finding traditional ingredients that are grown by native peoples, you know, like a wild rice from the Great Lakes region from Spirit Lake, uh, for instance, um, or Buffalo from Cheyenne River Buffalo Company. It's like those actually finding the resources and the communities of people that are embracing um, our traditions and then wanting to share uh, and get people to really understand who we are now and breaking that kind of romantic image of what once was. Very nice. That's Very interesting. Nice. Great, great words. Thank you so, so much, uh, Ben. And uh, we are just so honored to be able to share this month with you. And it's great to be yeah. on the council with you as well, my friend. Yeah, I appreciate you all. I thank you for letting me have a little time. I love seeing your faces, and uh, I wish I could be there cooking with Max. Uh, yes. but, uh, <laughs> but but this has been great. I really appreciate your time. All right. Thanks for joining thank us, Thank you ben. so much. Love to you and your family, bro. I appreciate it. Thanks, Ben. Oh, wow. What an amazing, amazing yeah. guy. Thank you so much. That's a perspective, you know, you don't think about every day. I'm glad we were able to invite Ben to the conversation. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And I'm sure there's more we can expand upon that. And yeah. we definitely have to, we have to get Ben here at the mansion, I think. Next yeah, year, right? Okay. Absolutely. And bring, and bring some of those Native American ingredients here. So, yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, okay. So listen, we made some really, really good food. So we wish you a happy holiday, a happy month. A happy time with your family. It is, you know, kind of a crazy world. And we're really grateful to be here with you. Everybody on the President's Council is really honored to be here. And we are so grateful for you all to have us here in your home and to share this moment with us. And so thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank well, you so we're much. Thank, thankful to you. We're thankful to President Biden. And we're thankful to everybody who tuned in to Take a minute to learn a little bit more about uh, some, some cool things you can make at Thanksgiving. And I hope that it is a wonderful, healthy experience. I also hope it's a moment where we can, you know, sort of just give thanks for all the, the love and blessings we have in the world, even in this moment of, of tumult and I think anxiety for, for a lot of folks. Um, and, and this is just a moment to come together and celebrate each other. So happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.
That was a really great cooking de demonstration. Uh, Dr. O, I think I'll turn it over to you. We're gonna have some time to, to do the question and answer before we jump over to the, the fitness portion of our evening. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I, I think I can answer a few of the questions or ask a few of the questions that have come in. Um, I know there's been a couple that Chef Jose has answered on chat, but just for those that are tuning in and listening in, um, I'll go back through them. Uh, I'm lactose intolerant. What do you suggest I do uh, to experience the Vimitas recipe? It sounds amazing. Um, do we, uh, Chef Jose? Yeah, so we, I had uh, recommended, uh, you, know, you could use a plant-based milk, maybe oat milk or almond milk. And uh, I think, um, probably oat is the most neutral. And so, yeah, and, and I think you, you still get the corn flavor and all the things that you're looking for in the dish by, by using that sort of milk. Yep. Is cornmeal the same as corn flour? No, so corn flour for this particular recipe is also known as masa repa. And that's a, inst it's a pre-cooked instant white corn flour. And that's why the, those umitas or tamales only take about 20 minutes. So it's, it's considerably different. Got it. And what were the, you used two different types of corn flour for thickening that uh, might not have been in the recipe. What were those if you want to expand on so that? So the, the corn flour was the first one I just mentioned, a masa repa instant white corn flour. And then we also used maseca, which is a uh, nixtamalized corn, uh, corn flour as well. It's a little more fine and yeah, it just provides a different sort of binding. So those, those are the two corn flours that we used. Okay. Um, and then I, we have a few questions that have come up. Uh, Chef Jose, you said you work with families to plan healthy meals on a budget. Have any of these families lived in food deserts? And how do you advise them to navigate that given such limited access to fresh, full foods? Yeah, well, we think that's, you know, one of the biggest challenges that the country is facing in general is, you know, food deserts and access to fresh, whole foods. Uh, we have a foundation called the Garces Foundation where we do uh, 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 food pantry boxes. So we do uh, culturally appropriate boxes of food for a family of four. And that's kind of one way that we're, we're combating it. But no, it, it remains uh, an issue and something, again, that we need to continue to tackle how to get fresh foods into these communities. Great. Um... One question came in from Alyssa, only four minutes to cook the Brussels sprouts. I thought they might need a little, like a lot more time. Uh, yes, you would think. Um, when, you, um, when you cut them in half uh, and put them sort of FaceTime down and char, the heat is actually like, like using all the water and the steam that's in the Brussels sprout to cook it. So yeah, four minutes really start to finish. Which is um, which is fantastic. That's great. Okay, how can you steam without a bamboo steamer? So one one quick uh, way, if you if you're trying to rig it, if you put a colander, a smaller size colander inside a pot, and then if that pot has a lid, it can cover it. That's one way to kind of you know elevate, and your water just can't go that much higher above the bottom of the colander. So it's it's a it's a way to it's it's a way to contract one without without an actual steamer. That's that's really useful tip. Okay. Um, did you use a nonstick or regular skillet for the Brussels sprouts? Would they be would they brown as well with the nonstick? Uh, we used a nonstick. Um, you can use stainless cast iron would probably work the best. Uh, but at the residence, they had a nonstick pan, which is nice because you can just kind of wipe it out. Can the vanilla for the pecans be added with the water or do you have to wait until the pecans are coated? Mm, uh, we're, the, the gov, <laughs> the gov's not here. So I don't know, chef, I think you add it whenever, right? I think you could add it in the first, with, with, with all the liquids. I think it, it all just kind of go, goes into that that mode. Great. Um, can you sub canned or bagged corn and honey? 
uh, and Amitas instead of fresh corn and agave. Absolutely, absolutely. Both both will work. And yeah, uh, I've used frozen corn like that's, and sometimes the, there's a frozen white sweet corn that's like picked at the right time, and it just it works really well. So, and then honey, honey would be a natural substitute, no problem. Would you start sauteed onions and garlic in cold olive oil and let the oil heat up as you did with the Brussels sprouts? Or do you heat the oil first? Uh, they usually use a little bit of oil. I, uh, I actually, I like starting in a cold pan. Um, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It really depends on what it is that you're, you know, trying to sort of achieve, but generally, onions and garlic to start a, a broth or like a stew, I will start cold and bring up. And I'll also throw in whatever spices I'm going to use. Um, let's just say we're using cumin, black pepper, coriander. I'll split the spices in half and I'll add a half in the very beginning with the onions and the garlic. And then I'll finish the other half at the end. I like to kind of build. Got it. Uh, Chef Mike, this one's for you. Uh, they always roast their Brussels sprouts. Oh, you What's guys froze a little bit. Do you, you all hear me? Yep, you froze for just a second there. Um, one other question that came in was, uh, they person's asking, they always roast their Brussels sprouts. What's the advantage to preparing? Yeah, them the I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm hearing a little freezing on my side as well. Well, I think that just the, the caramelization is kind of the key. I think it gets really deep. And sometimes when you roast them, it's kind of like a superficial uh, sort of seal, really, really robust. Can folks see me a little bit better now? Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Yeah, totally. Um, Wait, I'll, do, you, do you mind if I, I have a question. I have a question for Chef Ben Jacobs here. Um, we were talking about the rice pilaf, the wild rice pilaf. Ben, what is the method for, because I just, I just saw that, that again and I was like, I have to make that next Thursday. What, how do you cook the, the wild rice? So we we actually do the wild rice in advance because it takes longer to bloom. So we cook that in a separate pot and then we set it aside, kind of let it cool. And then we do our method from there. So for our recipe, which I would be happy to share, uh, diced poblano peppers, fresh corn off the cob. You can use frozen corn, uh, red onions. We basically caramelize those down a little bit. Uh, we then toss in the wild rice. We will then start cooking all that in. We use bison stock that we make, but you can substitute with anything mm. you like. So veg stock, chicken stock, beef stock, whatever you like, depending on what flavor you like to incorporate there. When that's finished and you start to get like a nice caramelization on the rice as well, um, everything's uh, come together nicely. Turn off the heat, add in scallions, um, any type of fresh component you like, scallions, chives if you like, we use scallions, uh, fresh diced cranberries, toss that up, put it in a bowl, mm. you're ready to go. One nice little thing to add to, which I really enjoy is small butternut squash. If you're gonna do that, add that first. Um, again, cause it's kind of like your Brussels sprouts. You, they, they will cook through, they'll caramelize, caramelize nicely mm. on one side. You get nice pops of color, sweetness, tartness with everything. All those components, little heat from the poblanos. So what's fun is it's a, it, it's a blank slate. So you can kind of add the veg that you like. Again, the one thing I would say is cook your rice first, just because you want to make sure that really blooms nicely, because uh, it does take a while to cook, and then uh, do it all in one pan like your uh, Brussels sprouts. Right. Amazing. Thank you so much. You got it. Oh, and salt. season. Make sure you season. Salt, pepper. <laughs> uh, that's great. Uh, one question. For people with diabetes who should not use sugar for the candied pecan, what is a natural substitute for sugar, like not artificial sweetener? Mm. Mm. That's a great question. I mean, I think that um, I think that what I would probably do is, you know, you could use something that is a little bit better that is not like a 
you know, like a refined sugar, which would be helpful. But quite frankly, I would probably just, I would use like very, very little honey. And I would just focus on the nutmeg and um, cinnamon. I mean, I think a lot of those sort of Thanksgiving spices imply sweetness. Uh, and so I would just, I would just try to cut down on that. Yeah, but so yeah, and, and a natural sweetener would be agave or honey. Really, that's really what, what you're looking at. Exactly. That's very helpful. Um, and they use any other oil other than olive oil for the sprouts? Sure. Yeah, you can use um, you can use uh, canola oil. You can use grapeseed oil. Yeah, definitely. I just wouldn't use like a nut oil because those don't tend to cook very well. You like to usually finish with those. Great. Uh, uh, this one oh, I'm sorry. Except for pe peanut oil. Peanut oil would be fine too. Excuse me. Chef Jose, did you have something to add? Yeah, Chef. Uh, how about avocado oil? You think that would that would work okay? And there, just a. Uh, I'm not sure, but the with I the, do. Yeah. Yeah, I think avocado would be really tasty. Actually, it would be delicious. It's a great idea. Great. Uh, for the two different types of corn flowers, where would one find them? So you could find them usually at a, a Latin grocery store, but they are available on Amazon. Um, but they're, they're, and Walmart has a, has a pretty big uh, Latin section. So I would go in any grocery store and kind of the Latin specialty aisle, and you usually find a version of it there. Got it. Chef Ben, uh, I think the last question's for you, which is how would you recommend uh, preparing the sweet potatoes? Uh, is there any traditional method? Uh, so actually what, what we like to do is, is make sure that we, we do it over open fire, which seems kind of a little crazy at first because you need to cook through with the potato, but we will slice ours into kind of big wedges. Um, we get nice char on those, a um, little bit of uh, oil, a uh, little salt, uh sear those really nicely um get some real char on that and then we will either finish it in the oven or we'll finish it almost steaming in a pan um again you can use any form of liquid if you just need to use a little water to steam those or you can just finish it in the oven similar to you know kind of a baked potato the nice thing about that is you get a crisp skin on the outside you get the aromas um the flavors of that char was really nice, which is going to give you that more traditional element of cooking outside over open fire, because most of our traditional methods are always cooked outside on fire, big pots, um, or just over the over the wood. So we try and find ways to incorporate that aroma, that flavor, but do it in your home. So that's what I would recommend. Wedges, fire if you can, or just on a grill outside, you can do it inside um, to get some of that sear on there, and then just finish them off either steamed in a, a pan or just thrown into the oven and finish off. Again, just keep an eye on texture, um, what you like, soft on the inside, nice crisp on the outside. Incredibly helpful, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. And then, sorry, one last question from Martha. Um, directions for the Brussels calls for slivered garlic, uh, but then in the directions it says it should be smashed, which is better, which one should it be? Well, actually, that's a great question. Slivered um, would be fine. Smashed is much easier. So whatever you got time with. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Slivered is, is um, I like the flavor of slivered garlic. And also when you cook it, the texture is really nice. But we threw almonds in there. And I feel like that gives it a nice sort of nice snap. Got it. This is all super helpful. Thank you all for sharing your amazing knowledge. Um, I think with that, I think we can uh, pivot a little bit to the fitness portion uh, that I know we alluded to. Uh, Dr. O, I think the floor is yours. Well, you know, thank you everyone. And while it was so generous for the Shapiro family to open their kitchen to all of you chefs, in the spirit of that generosity, I would be honored to open up my kitchen to any one of you if you wanted to come and cook <laughs> any of those dishes. So open it next kitchen. year. All right, I, I'll hold you to that. Thank you so much, all of you chefs, for doing that. So to transition us to the fitness portion of this Feast and Fitness event, as a physician myself, I just want to share a bit more about why physical activity 
and fitness are so important. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services released the second edition of the Physical Activity Guidelines for Americans in 2018. The guidelines provided evidence-based recommendations for people ages three and older to safely get the physical activity that they need to stay healthy. Different population groups have different guidelines, so I'm gonna share those recommendations. Across the board, all of us should be as active as possible. And lots of things count as physical activity, like walking the dog or shoveling snow. No matter how we get active, it's important that we all move throughout the day. Adults need a mix of physical activity to stay healthy. At least 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity aerobic activity. Now, what is aerobic activity? It's anything that gets your heart beating faster, like brisk walking or even dancing. At least two days a week of muscle strengthening activity, and muscle strengthening activity is anything that makes your muscles work harder than usual, like lifting weights or doing push-ups. And for those of you that don't think you have muscles, then start lifting weights or doing push-ups and then you'll find them. Older adults need the same amount as all adults. But if 150 minutes is too much, then just do whatever it is that you can. Older adults should also mix in activities to improve balance and, and lower the risk of falls, like even Tai Chi or swimming. Kids and teens age 6 to 17 need at least 60 minutes of physical activity every single day. Most of their 60 minutes can be moderate intensity aerobic activity, but at least three days a week, encourage kids to get vigorous physical intense aerobic activity. As part of their daily 60 minutes, kids and teens, believe it or not, also need some muscle strengthening activity and bone strengthening activity at least three days a week. Bone strengthening activity is anything that puts healthy pressure on their bones, like playing basketball or jumping rope. Now, for kids younger than six, aim for three hours a day, and the more the better. Limit the time when they're sitting around and just on their screens. Getting people to move more is important because of the tremendous benefits that come with being physically active. Physical activity has lots of long-term health benefits for adults. It can reduce the risk of dementia, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and certain cancers, including breast and lung cancer. It can help manage chronic conditions like diabetes and high blood pressure, and it can ease symptoms of arthritis, anxiety, and depression. Physical activity can also help you feel better right away. It can boost your mood, sharpen your focus, reduce your stress, and improve your sleep. Now, as a wheelchair user myself, it's important to point out that not everyone has two arms or two legs. Not everyone walks, not everyone runs. Therefore, being able to demonstrate that we're talking about everyone, we want to make sure that everyone is able to move your way. That's the most important part. So regardless of the resources that you have or the limbs that you have or don't have or the access that you have. All right. Now, in the spirit of keeping things moving, let's check out how our council members are showing how they move this holiday season. No matter what time of year it is, it's important for our bodies to move in order to be physically and mentally healthy. Here's how members of the President's Council on sports, fitness, and nutrition are moving this season. I move my way by playing tennis. I move my way by power walking in my neighborhood. I move my way by shooting free throws at practice. I move my way by playing golf. I move my way with Taekwondo. I move my way by walking. I move my way by playing with my kid. I move my way by training for the Boston Marathon and playing volleyball. I move my way by playing adaptive sports like wheelchair tennis. I move my way exercising with balls and Zumba. I move my way by playing pickleball. I move my way by Lando Bomba. 
I move my way by running. I move my way by catching produce for our community. I move my way through CrossFit. I move my way by playing softball and baseball with my kids. I move my way by running steps. Sometimes I'll even do these silly push-ups. As you can see, lots of things count as physical activity and they all add up. That was awesome. Uh, thanks everyone. And a big shout out to all of the council members who participated in the video. Um, I did want to go ahead and say thank you to everyone for coming tonight and for attending our event. Uh, a big shout out again to all of our council members who came tonight uh, and helped spearhead this effort. Uh, a big thank you to Governor Shapiro for letting us use the governor's mansion. Uh, and again, thank you to all of you for coming. We will send out a recording of the event uh, shortly and make sure that it's posted on our YouTube page. Uh, please follow us uh, if you're not already on Twitter. Um, we are at FitnessGov, and you can learn a little bit more about the President's Council and the work that we do. Uh, you can also visit us at our website at health.gov slash PCSFN. It's right above me. Um, and thank you all again. We wish you all a very happy and very healthy Thanksgiving. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Take care.